In this video, we're going to be taking a look at uh, the information on pages Excel 60 and 61, in which we're going to insert and delete rows and columns. Now, as you modify a worksheet, you may find it necessary to insert or delete rows and columns to keep your worksheet current. For example, you may need to insert rows to accommodate new inventory products or to remove a column of yearly totals that are no longer necessary. When you insert a new row, the row is inserted above the cell pointer and the contents of the worksheet shift down uh, from the newly inserted row. When you insert a new column, the column is inserted to the left of the cell pointer and the contents of the worksheet shift to the right of the new column. Now, of course, to insert multiple rows, you need to select the uh, same number of row headings as you want to insert before using the insert command. So let's take a look at step one, and it tells us that we want to right click cell A32. So we're going to go down a little bit, and we're going to right click here cell A32. And then next, we're going to go to the insert uh, on the shortcut menu. And when we click on that, of course, that's going to bring up the insert dialog box. And of course here you can choose to insert either a column uh, on there, or an entire row, or an entire column, or you can actually insert a single cell and shift the cells in the active uh, column to the right, or insert a single cell and shift the cells in the active row down. Now of course an additional row between the last row of data and the totals will visually separate the totals, so it kind of makes it give it a better visual appear to that. So in step two, it tells us that we want to choose the entire row option button. So we want to make sure that third option button is selected, and then we want to click on OK. And of course, notice that just inserts a blank row there, and of course our information has been moved down. Uh, and that's where the blank row appears between the billboard data and the totals. And of course, the formula result in cell E33 has not been changed because it updates automatically. Now, of course, the Insert Options button, uh, which looks like the little uh, paintbrush right here, uh, appears beside cell A33. Now, pointing to the button displays a list arrow, which you can click and then choose from the following options. Format Same as Above, which is the default setting, and it's already selected. You can choose Format the Same as Below, or you can clear the format altogether. So you can choose this, and you can see the top one is already selected for you. Now, of course, a quick tip on here, if you want to insert a single row or column, you can right-click the row heading immediately below where you want the new row, or right-click the column heading to the right of where you want the new column, and you can click on Insert on the shortcut menu. Step 3 tells us that now we want to click on the row 27 heading. So we want to click on this, and we notice that all of row 27 is selected. Next, in step four, it tells us that we want to click the delete button in the cells group. Now, not on your keyboard, we want the delete button in the cells group. And of course, once we have that, we can see that we have delete cells, delete rows, or delete sheet uh, on there. Now, of course, that's the list arrow. That's not what we really want to click. If you clicked on that, that's okay. Just deselect it, and we want the top part of this. And when we click on that, you'll now notice that Excel deleted row 27. And of course, all the rows below it shift up one row. Now you must use the delete button or the delete command on the shortcut menu to delete a row or column. Now if you press the delete key on your keyboard, that only removes the contents of the selected row or column, but not the column or row itself. Now, of course, a quick tip, if you did inadvertently click the delete list arrow, as I said before, uh, instead of the delete button itself, you can click on the delete sheet rows uh, in the menu that opens. So that kind of gives you an option there as well. Step five tells us that we want to click on the column J heading. So we want to click right up here on the column J heading. And then it tells us that we want to click the delete button in the cells group. Now that's not the delete list arrow down here. We just want to click on this one right here. And of course now we notice that we've deleted out um, column J. Now the remain columns to the right has now shift over one column to the left. Of course a quick tip on there. After inserting, 
or deleting rows or columns in a worksheet, uh, be sure to prove uh, formulas that contain relative cell reference to make sure that they have uh, automatically uh, updated for you as well. Um, if we take a look on page Excel 61, there's a couple uh, different uh, boxes right here, in which we'll just uh, read through those very quickly here. Uh, the first box is on top and talks about hiding and unhiding columns and rows. And it tells us that when you don't want data in a column or row to be visible, but you don't want to delete it, you can hide the column or row. Now, of course, to hide a uh, selected column, you click on the Format button in the Cells group on the Home tab, and you can point to the hide and unhide. And then of course you can click the hide columns. A hide column is indicated by a dark green vertical line in its original position. This green line disappears when you click elsewhere in the worksheet. Now you can simply display a hidden column by selecting columns on either side of the hidden column group and then you can click on the format button in the cells group pointing to the hide and unhide and then clicking the unhide columns button. Now, of course, to hide or unhide one or more rows, you need to substitute hide rows and unhide rows for the hide columns and unhide columns commands. Of course, as well, we can also add and edit comments uh, to our spreadsheet as well. And of course, much of your work in Excel may be done in collaboration with teammates and with whom you share worksheets. Now, you can share ideas with other worksheet users by adding comments within selected cells. Of course, to include a comment in a worksheet, you need to click uh, the cell where you want to place the comment. And of course, we'll just kind of show you this on here. You can click just the cell where you want the comment at uh, on there. And then you can click on the Review tab on there. And of course, that's where you can go in and click on the New Comment on there. And of course, that's where you can add in your comment. You can type your comment in the resizable text box that opens up. Uh, and it will actually contain your computer's name. Uh, when you do that, a small red triangle will appear in the upper right corner of the cell containing the comment. Now, the comments are not already displayed in the workbook uh, on there. Other users can point to the triangle to display the comment. Of course, to see all the worksheet comments uh, on there, you can click the Show All Comments button in the Comments group, which that's all, that's right here. You could click on that uh, and you can see them all. Now, if you want to edit a comment, you can click on the cell containing the comment and then click on the Edit Comment button in the Comments group to delete a comment. And, of course, you can click on the cell containing the comment and click the Delete button in the Comments group. And that concludes the information that we have in uh, pages Excel 60 and 61. In the uh, next video, we're going to be talking about applying colors, patterns, and borders. So make sure that you do save uh, your spreadsheet and you're ready to move on to the next video.